Good afternoon, and welcome to Capwriter Comprehensive 3, Part 5. Today we're going to finish the base cabinets. To do that, we have two cabinets we have to add. One right here, which is going to be a tall storage cabinet. And one over here, which is going to be a base cabinet with two doors. That we're going to modify although we won't modify it in this video today we'll save it for cleanup and then we're going to add two upper cabinets a diagonal corner cabinet here and then a wine cabinet here that has three well it's actually four boxes the first three boxes have a draw at the bottom and a single door at the top and the fourth box is going to have eight cubbies, basically. It's going to be a divided upper. It's going to have eight partitions or cavities, whatever you want to call them. And those are going to be for wine bottles. So that's what we're going to do today. If we have time, we will also show you how to create these same cabinets over here but mirrored so that this wall and this wall look the same. In other words, they're mirrored on either side of this window. But before we do that, what I want to do is I want to review this divided base and in particular the divided box dialog box. It's a little difficult to understand, but I'm going to try and simplify it a little more today. So first, let me bring that up. I'm going to pretend to be editing this cabinet. I'm not actually going to do it, but I want to pretend. So what I'm going to do, you can select any part to edit a cabinet. Any part, doesn't matter which one. Right click go to cab writer edit cabinet that's the edit cabinet tool first question it'll ask me is in editing it do i want to use the stored defaults or the stored dna or something different i'm going to use the stored defaults all right when i bring it up i get two dialog boxes because i'm editing this is the first one for box number one and it'll tell me that box number one is a divided base. And since it knows it's a divided base, it's presenting the dialog box for divided box. Let me move this out of the way. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Remember I told you in part four that this line here represents the bottom of the cabinet. That is, this actual cabinet bottom. 
and that this line represents the cabinet top. This is the top. What we have here, if we look, the first place you want to look to decipher this is to look in this column and start at the bottom. First thing it tells you is you have at position one, which is 29 and three quarters inches, a fixed shelf, a partition, if you will. And sure enough, if we look at this 29 and three quarters inches up, we have We have this shelf. It's a partition, a fixed shelf. Now the other thing it's telling me is between that thick shelf and the bottom, I have a cavity which is a door. Actually, two doors. Notice how this is laid out a little below this line because it's telling me that this type cavity is between the bottom and this partition. And sure enough, here I have two doors between the bottom and this partition. These zeros mean there's no more partitions. And by the way, you'll get an error if you put a partition, say, here with a bunch of zeros below it. Any partitions have to be sequential. In other words, they have to start here, the next one has to be here, next one has to be here. You cannot have zeros and then a partition. All the zeros should, should be contiguous. But anytime you have zeros, it means you have no partition. So all we have in this cabinet is the cabinet bottom, this one partition, and the cabinet top. And this tells me between this partition and the cabinet top is nothing. It's an opening. And that's, in fact, what we have here. Between this partition and the cabinet top, we have an opening. So we're going to expand this a little bit when we draw the next cabinet. And it's going to get a tiny bit more exciting. So let's get on with that. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to cancel this. And it tells me that the cabinet has been completed, although nothing got edited. All right, so now I want to draw this cabinet over here. And to do that, let's go look at our layout drawing. When I was reviewing the completed part four, just after recording it, and looking at this drawing, I noticed something that sort of panicked me. When I was drawing cabinet seven and referring to this drawing, this layout drawing, I was actually looking at cabinet eight. And I took the opening of 29 inches for cabinet seven instead of 21 inches for cabinet seven. So the first thing we're going to have to do when we go back to our drawing is correct that. And we're going to correct it by simply moving this style of this cabinet to the right 8 inches. Because 29 minus 8 is 21. So that'll leave it at 21 inches. Then we can draw this cabinet, which does have an opening of 29 inches. So let's go back to our the drawing we're working on. And this, this error will give me an opportunity to show you another tool called the Edit Story Stick. Remember that Story Sticks define the length of a cabinet, the width of openings, and things like that. So when I edit cabinets, I can edit it in a number of ways. First, I I pick a part, any part in the cabinet, and I right click, go to Cab Writer, and I can do a bunch of things, but the two up at the top are the two edits. The edit cabinet will change the functionality of a cabinet. For instance, you can change a cabinet from a draw bank base to a standard base with draw to a sink or anything else. 
But if you want to change the, the positioning of the, of the markers or the dividers, you need to use Edit Story Stick. And that's what we're going to do right now. And so when it comes up, it's got this marker highlighted. Now, apparently, I drew this cabinet from right to left. So what it's highlighting first is the right marker. I want to leave that alone. So I'll just say next. Now it's highlighting the left marker. I want to move that eight inches to the right because this opening is 29 inches and I want it to be 21. So I'm going to move this to the right 8 inches and I'll say OK. And there we go. Now I have my new cabinet and I'll just check the opening just to be sure. 21 inches and notice that I haven't changed the functionality if you will of this cabinet it's still exactly the cabinet I wanted a two compartment uh, divided base the bottom compartment being two doors with a shelf and this being an opening for my microwave but what I do want to do is I want to get rid of these mark these guide points that's not actually the markers it's the guide points representing the marker and put new ones down here and so let me do that and I guess the easiest way to do this would be and then just put some markers there and get rid of these okay so now I got my new markers and I just want to make sure yep they're an inch and a half which is a standard connector dimension all right, so now I'm ready to draw divided base over here that's going to be the tall storage cabinet. Let's just make sure I have the tall storage default selected. I'll load those. Now let's just review them a little bit. Now this is going to be a tall cabinet. In fact, it's going to be 90 inches tall to line up with the top of the upper cabinets. The other minor modification we made is I've added mid rails. Not the top rail, just the base mid rails. By the way, notice that these base door and draw front heights are normally a problem. But again, in divided bases and divided uppers, this is ignored. So I can ignore these red dots if I wish. And I will right now to save time. I'll just ignore that. Okay, so we've got that set up. Let's close it. And we're ready to draw. Now remember, this is a 29-inch opening. So I'll take my story stick with the distance tool and mark off 29 inches. And I'll have to come out this side. And this is going to be a connector at this end because there's going to be a refrigerator, I believe, next to it uh, connecting it. So I'll make that a left connector. And this I'll just make another connector, right connector. Beep. 
Um, let me clear this story stick and do that again. That's a left connector. And I'll make this a right connector. Okay, now we hit the end key. And we're going to select a divided base. And we're back to this box called the divided box. This one's going to be a touch more complex. Our first compartment or first divider is going to be the same as the microwave. 29 and 3 quarters. And again, it's going to have a fixed shelf and it's going to be a door two doors. Our next divider is going to be at 37 and 3 sixteenths. That also is going to have, well no, this one's going to have a mid stretcher. And the reason it's going to be a mid stretcher is it's going to be a divider be between two draws. And so between this divider and this divider, we're going to put a draw. When choosing draw, this means nothing. So I can choose one or two. And it'll always be one draw because that's all we've implemented. It's possible somewhere down the line will allow you to do a combo draw so you can choose one or two here. But we'll save that for a little later. All right, the next one now is going to be 44 and 5 eighths. And that's going to be a fixed shelf. And between this fixed shelf and this mid stretcher at these positions are going to be another draw. And finally, between this position, this fixed shelf, and the top is going to be two doors. Now this is what we have to be careful of because these are all zeros. It's between this partition right here in position three and the top and it's going to be two doors okay so we just say okay you say okay here and we're patient this will take a bit because it's a fairly complex piece of cabinet and let's see what we got Uh, that's interesting. Now, you see what I got here? This looks like a piece of a diagonal corner cab. So what I'm thinking is that my story stick is wrong. So I may have done the wrong thing with the story stick. So let's take a look at that. Let's edit the story stick. We'll choose any part. In fact, we can, we can even choose these parts. Go out to Cap Writer, edit story stick. That was a left connector. Whoa, that was supposed to be a right connector, not a right pivot connector. And because it was a right pivot connector, we got all of this, all of these tall styles. So let's just change it to a right connector. 
These are the kinds of mistakes you can easily make, but this shows you how to fix them. Now this error message leads me to believe there may be more than one problem and I may have to fix this more than once. All right, now we're going to have to do a repair again because the first one, the first repair was trying to convert a diagonal corner cab set of um, styles into normal styles. So now we have to fix it again. Let's just that's a left. Ah, oh, that's interesting. That was a corner connector. That was the problem. So left connector, right connector. Patience. And there we go. Now we've got what we wanted. So you can make those kinds of mistakes and I make them. I've been working with carburetor for years. And I still make those kinds of mistakes, but that's kind of how you fix them. All right, so now we have our tall storage cabinet. We want to make sure that the numbering is correct. And the number of this cabinet right now is C16. We want it to be C8. So we'll just change it to C8. Okay, let's move on to our next cabinet. The cabinet we're going to draw next is this cabinet right here. Let me let me zoom in and turn this around a little bit. Now this starts out as a normal cabinet that's about this wide from here to about here. And it's a standard base with two doors. That's the way we're going to draw it. And then later on, when we get to the cleanup phase of this project, we will create this corner. But let's see what it looks like in the layout drawing. Okay, it's this cabinet right here, C12. And let's zoom in here a little bit. Now, to position this cabinet, we notice it starts 9 16 from the end of this wall. And the other end of it is 30 and 9 16 from the end of this wall. And by the way, if I look at this real close, you notice this is pointing to this point right here. This is an inch and a half connector. And it'll be drawn as a standard inch and a half connector and later on we'll bevel it. But the important part is that it starts 9 16 from the end of the wall and the cabinet total cabinet width is 30 inches. So with that information let's go back to our drawing. Okay, so let's turn around here and let's see what we can do here. First we have to create a another construction line 24 inches from that wall and then we'll create this line, which is going to be 9 16 from the end of this wall, and another one that is 30 and 9 16 from the end of this wall. Uh, 
uh, that's not the one. That's it. That's the one we want right there. All right. So on this side of the cabinet, we're going to need a connector. On this side of the cabinet, it's going to be an end sheet. So let's start here. Make that a left sheet. And now to make sure I don't get confused here. See, I want to go not, I've got three. I want to start here. So that's going to be I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to use the distance tool. And I'm going to mark 30 inches. And come back this way. There we go. That wants to be a right connector. Now let's zoom in real close, make sure we got the right place. I'm a little worried we didn't. So what I'll do is I'll back up. I'll delete this line, this construction line. Apparently what's happening is there's dimensions here so small that um, we're not getting the right place. So I'll go back, use the distance tool. That's 30 inches. I'll click and come out here and make that a right connector. So this is a problem with SketchUp in very, 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 very small dimensions. It, it sometimes does not click on the right uh, construction line or construction point. But now I've got it. So I'll hit end. And this is going to be a standard base with two doors. All right. Now that I've done that, what I can do is actually move this cabinet. To the right so that that point lines up with that point. So here's how we do that. We simply select this cabinet, any part on this cabinet, and we use the move tool. And notice this is the starting point of that cabinet, the green. And the stopping point, or the end of it, is here. I want the new starting point to be here. And I want this to go out Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what distance I come out. So I can click here on this guide point. And watch what happens. Notice it moved the cabinet so that the new starting point was this point, which was the ending point of this cabinet. So that's how the move tool works. One more time, I'm going to undo that. By the way, let's um, notice this cabinet is cabinet 5. 
I'm going to move it using this tool right here, the Move tool. It tells me it was drawn left to right. All I need to do is specify a new starting point going left to right and, a, and another point. It doesn't need to be the correct width or anything like that. It only needs to be a direction or a vector. So I'll choose this point and it's moved the cabinet. Now let's see what the number is. Notice it's still 5. It doesn't change the cabinet number. It simply moves the cabinet, keeps the same number. That's because it's not a redraw tool. It's simply a copy tool. I'm sorry, not a copy tool, a move tool. Simply a move tool moves the cabinet to a new position. However, having done that, it actually copies the DNA and puts it back in. So if I redraw this cabinet, it will redraw it in this position, not the old position. It'll redraw it in the new position. It now has new DNA, including a new story stick. So that's very useful. Now let's go back to this cabinet and I'm going to update the number. Right now it's called C17, but I want it to be C12. So I'll just renumber it to C12. Okay. Apparently I created a problem somewhere along the way. Let's see if we can find it. This gives me an opportunity to introduce you to a new tool. By the way, notice that this left the cabinet at C17. Didn't make any changes. But let's see what happened. What, where is C12? To my knowledge, it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't exist in this model. But let's see if we can find it. All right, so I'll choose the outliner. I guess I already have. And I'm gonna, and in the, here's the outliner right here. And right now it shows here every part that's in the scene that I have selected. And if I don't have any scenes, it shows every part in the model. But this filter thing up here lets me find certain things. So I, what I wanna do is I wanna type capital C, 12, capital L. And notice it found a bunch of parts in red. I'm going to select all those parts. And I'm going to see what cabinet that is. That's interesting. That shouldn't be cabinet C12, but it is. If I go back here and select one of the parts, it's C12. I think the mistake I made is when I moved this style to the right eight inches, I think I didn't go back and renumber this cabinet to C7L. So let me do that now. I'll just make that cabinet 7. I'll check it. And sure enough, it's cabinet C7L. Now I can go back and renumber this cabinet. And I want this one to be cabinet 12. And I'll check that. And sure enough, it's C12L. Let me just make a comment about this renumbering of cabinets that I'm doing. The only reason I'm doing that is because I want this model, when it's done, 
I want its cabinets to be numbered exactly the same as the completed model that we started this exercise with. In real life, you don't have to do that. In fact, you don't have to do that when you're going through these videotapes if you, if you, if you don't want to. Um, you can just let whatever cab writer assigns as cabinet numbers uh, to these cabinets, just leave it alone. You don't have to go back and renumber these. I'm doing it for a very specific purpose, which is to have this model end up the same as the model we started with. That will help me in the end uh, when we go to moving things and into layout. So again, this is just something I'm doing and occasionally I forget to do it and it creates problems. But it also points out some learning exercises. By the way, while I'm at it, I am going to close the Outliner tool. The Outliner tool is one that, for the most part, you should keep it closed. It slows things down. When you're drawing cabinets or editing cabinets and things like that, it slows SketchUp way down. Uh, so keep out, keep the outline or two closed unless you need it like we just did. Well now we've completed the base cabinets. Have all of these cabinets, not the refrigerator cabinet because that's an upper cabinet, and the island. And now what we're going to do is switch to upper cabinets. And we're going to start here with C10U and then we'll draw this cabinet. C16U. This is just a standard corner cabinet. Very much like this corner cabinet over here, only this was a two box cabinet. This will be a one box cabinet. And next to it will be a four box divided upper. Our first upper divided upper cabinet. And I think when we finish those, we're going to call this a day. So let's look at the layout drawing. Now this is a new layout drawing. This is the base plan, the upper plan rather, not the base plan. We've been looking at the base plan, but we've completed the base cabinets. Now we're looking at the upper plan. You can see that here. And these are the two cabinets we're going to finish with. This is going to be another one of these 14 inch diagonal corner caps. In other words, from the pivot point, which is right about here, to here is going to be 14 inches. And then we're going to draw this cabinet. So let's go back to our model and we're going to need some construction lines. Then the easiest way to do that is a start here, click at the bottom of this wall, up along the blue axis by pressing the up arrow key, then we're going to go up 54 inches. 54 inches is calculated by the 36 inch standard base cabinets and 18 inches between the top of the countertop and the bottom of the cabinet. That gives you 54 inches. But I don't want this on the wall. I want to bring it out the depth of a cabinet. So I'm going to bring it out 13 inches. And the way I do that is simply select it. And I'll use the Move tool. This is the native Move tool in SketchUp. And I'll come out along the green axis. And I'm going to come out 13 inches. And while I'm at it, I can do the same thing on this wall over here. I'll start here, come up 54, and I'll move that out by selecting it. This time I'll move it out along the red axis, 13 inches. 
and I'm ready to start drawing. Now, since I'm drawing upper cabinets now, I want to go and open up the upper basic. This is going to be my base basic style for upper cabinets. So let me load that and close it. That's now what my new cab writer settings are. And so I can start with the story stick and come out this way. Now this is going to be a left pivot. Pivot because it's a diagonal corner cab. And sheet because it's going to end with the sheet ending. And let me just come around here. And I'll use the distance tool. Mark off 14 inches. Which is the outer edge of my cabinet. So I have to come in. And this one's going to be a connector because I'm going to connect to the wine cabinet. So it'll be a right connector. I'll hit the end key and choose diagonal corner upper. And there we go. So we have our first cabinet. Now we have to remember to number it. And it's going to be C10. All I need is the digits, just 10. And I'll check it. And sure enough, it's C10U now. C10U for upper. And now I'm ready to do this cabinet here. So what I'm going to do is go back to my layout drawing. And my layout drawing tells me that this cabinet, the end of this cabinet, is 81 and one half inches from the wall. 81 and one half inches. So let me lay that out. Let, let's go back to our drawing. So from the wall, I'm going to come out 81 and one half inches. And I'm going to do it here along the red. 81 and one half inches. And now I want to project that down to here. I'll come out 13. And I'll take and create a line right there. And there should be an intersection there. And that intersection will end up 81 and one half inches from the wall. Let's just measure it. We'll go along the red axis to the wall and it's 81 and one half inches. Okay. I'm going to get rid of That, that, and that. Whoa. Now before I do that, let's mark, let's mark this point. Okay, now I can get rid of them. All right, so now this is going to be our last cabinet, and it's probably going to be the most complex divided cabinet we're going to do. So let's see what it's going to look like.
the divided upper wine cabinet. So I have the correct default. And let's just look at these defaults for a second. This is an upper cabinet. The divided upper is going to be the same height as the divided cabinets. I'm sorry, as the standard upper cabinets. The face frame is going to be a little different. I'm going to include in this face frame, let's see, I'm going to include the mid rail and the bottom rail. And you'll see why in a moment. And again, this interrupts the standard style of these cabinets. And it's not my intention to corrupt styles, but rather to just show you uh, some different ways of setting up the defaults and some different looks. Whoops, I put that in the wrong place. And if I look over here, I've already done that. The mid rail and the bottom rail is already set. All right, so if I click update and save, I can now draw my divided upper. I'll hit the N key. Well, first let me choose the story stick. Hit the N key. Now it tells me that I have an opening that's less than a minimum opening. And if I were going to use, that's this opening right here, the wine cabinet. If I were going to have a door there, that would be a bit of a problem. But since I'm not going to put a door on it, I just simply ignore it. It's a warning. And I'm going to choose divided upper. And let's see. My first three cabinets are going to have a divider six inches from the bottom of the cabinet. That's going to be a fixed shelf. And there's going to be one draw. Doesn't matter what I set this to, but I'm going to leave it at one. And then above that, I'm going to have a door. And it's going to be one door. And that door is going to go all the way from this divider at six inches to the top of the box. Notice these are all zeros. So that door will go from six inches up to the top. So I'll say OK. And now it won't let me choose anything else here because, well, I can try, but it, it will tell me I shouldn't. Because you can only have divided uppers in a divided upper cabinet. So they have to all be divided upper boxes. So it's already pre-selected divided upper. So I'll hit next. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Six inches. Fixed shelf. This is going to be a draw. One. And this is going to be a door. One. Next. And again. Six inches, thick shelf, uh, draw, door, both one, and I'll say OK. And the next one's going to be different. Next one's my last one, by the way. Notice this changed to OK, not next anymore. So this one's going to be different. It's going to start out. These are going to be some funny dimensions. And I had to develop this a little bit with trial and error. But here are the dimensions. I'll give them to you. You don't have to do the trial and error. This one's going to be 4 and 11 sixteenths. And let me just get these filled in first. 8 and 7 eighths. Thirteen and the sixteenth, seventeen and a quarter, twenty-eight 
21 and 7 16 25 and 5 eighths and 29 and 13 16 Now, how many cavities or compartments am I going to have? Well, this is one from the bottom to this. And then from this to this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this one to the top, eight. It's going to give me eight compartments or eight cavities, whatever you want to call them. These are all going to be fixed shelves. And these are going to all be none, meaning no doors, no drawers. So I'm all set to go. I've got this set for 5 eighths, which is what I want. And so I say OK. And I say OK again. And now I'm patient. Got to be very patient. It's got four boxes, lots of cubbies. And there we go. And it turned out just like we wanted it to, just like our initial drawing. Now, what is missing, and by the way, before I forget it, let me just renumber this cabinet. This is going to be C16, I believe. Let me just check that on the... Yeah, let me check it here. That's C16. Okay. Now here, notice what we have here. Notice these nice little curvy things. We're not going to do that right at the moment. In fact, we got this one up here is not there at all at the moment. But we're not going to do that right at the moment. We're going to leave that for cleanup. But everything else is just as we want it. Let's go back to our drawing. And you can see this is missing here. These don't have the curve. And as I said, we're going to save that for cleanup, and it'll be obvious as to why in the next video. So until then, have a good day, and I'll see you back here in part six.